Hello and welcome to TNT Double Shot again. We our, are back. Our installment that is at some number now. If I'm more organized, <laughs> I can tell you which installment this was, but I cannot. But I'm an architectural photographer. My name's Trent and Tim. Studio manager, retoucher. Extraordinaire. extraordinaire. Wizard, wizard is how I normally refer wizard. to you. Yeah. <laughs> When we're on site, I was like, oh, that's why uh, that's why you have the wizard deal. I'm with ordering that. the wizard hat as soon as we're done. <laughs> Maybe can you like put one in in this video? Just I, may, like, I, on I, I've done it. I did it in the last one. You did? Remember that? Uh, the last series we did of this, I think you said wizard and I like dropped in like a clip art. <laughs> like, <laughs> Nice. Uh, all right. So this is where we go over kind of the photographer side of things and then the post-production side of things. Typically, a photographer will be the one doing all the work. I used to do that, uh, but then years ago, I realized I was probably not doing as good a job as I needed to do to be more successful. So I eventually brought in, and he's amazing. That's why we call him the wizard. Anyways, we are looking at uh, both a still and video shoot that we did for Minoti. Uh, which is kind of like the parent company. And then it's like uh, someone can come in and, and say, I want to open a Minoti store. Like a showroom. And, yeah. So yeah. Uh, our direct client was the owner in the Boston area, not specifically Minoti, but the Minoti um, head office in New York for the U.S. version. It's an Italian company, but they, they had contacted us to do both still and video shoot of this space in Boston. And... Anytime you do both still and video, you, you better be really careful on that approach. Um, the how you find what you're going to shoot through a still photo process is is very different from what you'll do with a video approach. Mm. And what we've developed in being able to do both on the same day is that we will do the still photo part of it first, and then after that. We simply move the still camera out and we bring in the tripod with a slider and cinema camera on it uh, to essentially replicate what we've already done in still photography. Now, this is a less creative version of videography, but you do kind of the heavy lifting and the still photo composition of it. And then you just kind of move, uh, add movement to it, essentially, um, in in doing the, the film, uh, film, uh, video cinema capture of it uh we we did this and, and then the other difficulties you do have to bring in kind of cinema lighting and, and everything yeah, else to fill in the, to, the shadowy areas yeah or you can highlight something. you cannot do that and and in this situation we we're able to do that a little bit because they had such uh, intense and adjustable say, this, lighting this, this project lends itself well to like a video photo capture because it it's a showroom so it's everything's like set and the lighting is relatively nice and so you can kind of lean on a lot yeah. of that yeah the only real added lighting that we were doing when we were shooting for video on this was kind of adding like rim light from mm. outer frame coming towards camera and creating a little bit of a lens flare here and there um and even in still we didn't have to add a ton but we bounced stuff off the ceiling sometimes to just kind of I think it was soften the, the shadows sh yeah, and stuff. the shadows was like the big thing. And, it, and it's mostly not shadows that naturally occur on the furniture, but mostly shadows on the floor created by the furniture if they're too distracting. Like we have I mean, in this image, we have it kind of under the chair and under the other chair, and but they're not overly distracting. That kind of shadow being distracting is when you have a shadow here and then here and then it's here. It's like stepped. Yeah, yeah. like, and like this look, has a different depth in it here but it's not as bad. It's like super dark, a little brighter, and I had to look closely to see that it's even a little brighter mm -hmm. there. Like if um, you look under the chairs at the dining room table there, those are nice just pools of shadow. Right, and you probably brought that right. in there. Yeah. So yeah, the, the shadow there is more of a pool than a defined thing here, which to me that looks a little nicer. So um, yeah, so kind of the general, this first, take on this is to just kind of give you the general lay of the land of how we came across this client, how we interacted with the client, negotiating everything else, and then how we shot it and to look at all the final images we have. And then we'll take another video and probably go over our favorite interior image and then the video itself. Right. Yep. Okay. Yep. 
that's what we're doing. That's the game plan. Um, so these guys contacted us from New York. Uh, it was a specific different client in New York, essentially individual in New York that contacted us. And then when we're on site working, it was with different people. Um, and I'd actually, when we had gotten this job, it was just after we almost got a really big job for another client. And so I bought this gear for the really big job that didn't come through and we had it to use on what was this that, job. the jib jib arm yeah the jib yeah. arm so we had in this shoot we used the still camera the fuji gfx 100 but then for the video work we had uh let's see we, we had, had the c the c200 on uh the slider the edelkrone slider mm -hmm. and then we had um i think a, one of joe's joe carter of joe carter films uh Act, acted kind of like sometimes primary and sometimes secondary shooter with us as we were working on this. You think um, he had the Black Magic. 6K yeah, so he had 6K? two. He has two Black Magics, and uh, we used one of them, I believe, on the Edelkrone jib arm that we bought for this job or for the other job that we used on this job. And it's really nice because you can get the up and down jib movement, but there's also a pivot here. So you can kind of go from here and do this kind of thing and you get some really cool stuff out of it. Uh, so we had the, a black magic on the jib arm, mm -hmm. motorized jib arm. And then we had Joe running around also with his other black magic just on the, the DJI gimbal arm. Now, that the thing that he would run around with was his gimbal arm. Right. But what we did actually was put the DJI gimbal arm attached to the black or the uh, Edelkrone jib arm. Right. So we'd program the jib arm to like be flat here and then kind of come up and do this, you know, but we'd have hanging from there the DJI jib arm with a camera in it. And through the DJI app, you could say, stay pointing on this chair mm -hmm. and it would it would locate that thing. And as it moved, it would just stay pointing at that thing. Mm. And it, it had a really cool look yeah, to it. Yeah, that's pretty cool to have it, that, that level of control over. over yeah, because you had pivot on top of the tripod mm -hmm. and then you had the jib arm staying flat but moving. And then on the end of that jib arm, you had a whole nother gimbal system going right. on. So it, it, now, why why did you feel you needed to bring in a, a third shooter? I guess like someone well, like Joe Carter. We had one day to shoot it, and photo and video. photo and video, and to do all of it, just me and assistant, which Corey was helping us on right. this one, right? Um, to to do all of that, just one person is just. Uh, or, you know, one team of uh, right. uh, principal director and assistant, it's too much. Mm. Um, so to have someone uh, working a stage behind us, like we're working on the major composition with the still shoot, uh, to have someone coming in right behind us and saying, all right, what am I focusing on? What am I doing? What are you looking for? And to be able to just tell Joe, yeah, we're looking for roughly this, that, and right, the other. Yeah. And he's like, all righty. Like Joe, who's really familiar been a filmmaker for a long time He's, yep. he knows how to use the tools and he can just execute like right perfectly. and i mean to be fair what joe typically does is more of a of a, an observational human mm. kind of filming and he really enjoyed like oh this is totally like this uh serene controlled environment right, yeah. and we get to just really really take some time and focus on an immovable object mm. kind of thing rather than you know documenting right. uh like a, a storm essentially right, yeah. so he he said he had a lot of fun doing it and anytime we can work with joe we love to uh have him think, help out because I think the he last just time he a lot worked with it. us was wasn't that vegas, like las probably. vegas like long, eight years long ago, you time ago. Maybe some of you have seen that video on our youtube channel but yeah and that go check it out that vegas job was one of the first ones i had done where we incorporated video and <laughs> it's just kind of like, yeah, no, we can do it. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and so that like after the, like, all right, we're going to have you come back and do that. I was like, well, I guess I'm bringing Joe because yeah. I, I don't know what was, I'm doing. That was the first time you're like, well, I guess we're doing video now and, you know, we're, yep. we're figuring this out. And yeah. And and there's different approaches to that. I've had friends and, and other people who just do not do something professionally until they've done it a thousand times right, yeah. and then know how to do it. And I'm you're more typically a little more like I can secure that job. And I know I can execute it, maybe not personally and singularly me, but I know people who can help me right, do that yeah, yeah. and we'll get it done. You and can that's facilitate it. 
yeah accomplishing it yeah so i i acted a little bit more like a producer on that right. first thing but then brought my eye to it but i did not know how to technically make everything work uh to video capture that initial home in vegas and joe was there just kind of like oh yeah i know what you do is that you don't know that i was like oh yeah no <laughs> well there's so. always that argument that like you know you don't you don't need to learn all the tools for everything and be proficient in all these, all this software or whatever. Right. You know, you just figure it out when you need to, to be able to use it. And, right. You know, so as you have that vision and the, the, you know, you can, you can, you can do anything. Right. <laughs> we can do anything. But, uh, yeah, it was great to have Joe working on this, uh, really helped us out. Um, and so this was a showroom furniture showroom and we had to work on, uh, what we were framing up and focusing on because there's odds and ends in here that they are not responsible for like mm. selling or anything else, but are odds and ends that are fitting out the space to make it look like it's a fit out space, but they're not selling everything. Like there. The, maybe the glassware on the yeah, table. Yeah. Glassware, or... little centerpieces and stuff maybe are not for sale, but they add to the presentation right. of the thing. So sometimes we'd focus on a detail and it wasn't until later we realized like, oh, that's not their detail and they right, don't care yeah, to have yeah, that. Yeah. So yep. uh, hindsight kind of situation. Um, so they had several setups like this. They had this one here. They had one over to the right of frame from where that was that was kind of plain, not as interesting. And then on a wall on the other side of the wall in this direction from that thing that we're looking at here, there was a whole lineup of one, two, three, four settings, like living room, living room, living room, and then a bedroom, all kind of open one to the mm. next to a degree. And then one degree closer to the windows on the street, there was another one, two, three and a half ish, four uh, setups. And we had to try and capture all of those both with uh, photo, video, and details all in one day. And it was a lot. And the ex um, exterior as well. Yeah, a couple yeah. things on the exterior. Um, it was a lot, but uh, all of it was pretty much there, styled and ready to go. So it's it's mostly just choosing compositions and then adding lighting where you know you'll need it and uh, getting the best out of it. So what yeah, do you think? No, I, <laughs> the, I mean, the what was the the... The video that was to be produced was just kind of like a highlight reel, really. It yes. wasn't like yeah. any voiceover, no interviews or anything. It was really just showcasing the furniture. So in the, the right. editing portion of that was pretty easy in terms of, yeah, it wasn't too complex. Right. Um, just picking out the best moments. But Yeah. And it to me, it's it's always a little hard to shoot in that manner because you're just getting what you can get. And then you have to hope that you have something to make a good edit right. in the end, instead of having a whole pre pan planned out approach and an I a clear idea of what the final edit is going to look like when we shoot in that way, we can shoot like in a half day mm. because you know, like, all right, this clip is going to be t two seconds and right, it's yeah. going to be a riser shot focusing on that. And it's going to show that and it's more storyboarded out. I mean, you can, yeah, you can, if you have a complete storyboard, you're super efficient. This was kind of like, all right, what's going to be the best thing can. out of here? Yeah, what's going to be the best thing out of here? It was just an endless, uh, an endless uh, exposure to the infinite option, mm -hmm. which is always difficult to to interact with. It takes a lot more out of you when you How do, do you think way. about it. Then, like, do you just kind of think like, well, we'll get the overall, then we'll move in to like a mid shot and then a detail. And if you just kind of repeat yep. that through every scene, yeah. generally cover I, your bases. I call it like an establishing shot. Yeah. Like this feels more like an establishing shot. Mm -hmm. And then you'll see in the video, we have stuff just kind of closer up on the table and the rug kind of thing. And then something on the, uh, on the dining room kind of area. So you can think of it as like wide, medium, tight. Right. So okay. you absolutely have to cover wide, medium, mm -hmm. tight on yep. each one of these spaces. We did like wide, wide, tight 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 and then detail 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 you know and so through that you cover your bases but if you don't have to cover anything more than exactly precisely just the bases if you can get your client to be extremely clear ahead of time it'll be so easy mm -hmm. in, yeah. in comparison to working this way but they did not have a script they didn't have an idea they just had reference videos to other things they had shot that said can you do stuff like this yeah. and like yeah yeah, yeah we can do that okay <laughs> 
and honestly all a lot of my other time for pre-production and everything else was going into the couple other jobs that were surrounding this and then this is the only one that came through and so we kind of just you know had to wing it to some degree so all right well, so like that's a that's a general overview yeah. <laughs> um anything else before we kind of mm -hmm. go through these really I don't think so. What was your general feel on post-producing something like this that had a lot of incandescent lighting or like on-site lighting already existing yeah. compared with bringing in uh, additional lighting? How do you approach that? How much do you pull from one and not the other? I mean, I was a little bit nervous about this when I first got it because I was like, oh, there's going to be so much you know, um, color, color cast from overhead lighting and mm -hmm. natural light, but they're really... You know, we usually start with like the natural light layer. It's like almost generally all the time. That's where we start. But in this case, it was you were just using the light that was there. So in some ways it was a wasn't I mean, it's it set up to be lit nice. And so it was really just bringing in the 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 uh, flash bulb flash pops that you did and mm -hmm. just kind of painting that in. But it wasn't that bad. I mean, it, it's just I don't know the lighting. Something about the lighting in the place was just it worked well it wasn't hard to remove it was they were easier to edit than i than i initially thought no yep. um that's always a pleasant surprise yeah i was surprised i um there's some that you know you're near the window where you're kind of getting some of the light from outside that there was some more work to be done there but overall some of the, the these sets that are deeper inside the building were were pretty easy right my own my only my only post-production critique on this one would be just that little shadow yeah. on the side of that. I don't. I wonder if we had a pop off the ceiling that would have made that it's look possible. a little less like yeah. that. But it's always like you'll go to the nth degree on something. All right, we got it all, and then like a month later, it something stands out to you so obvious that you're how just did like, we miss that? that? Yeah, <laughs> but I mean, I wonder how many people noticed and were looking at that before right. I pointed it out too, you know? Probably so, none. Well, I shouldn't say that. A couple sure. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So we will go through these guys. So we went from this kind of composition that leaves you this opening to go to the couch and kind of break the one point perspective. We then, you know, go to this perspective, which the thing I don't like about this is that it feels a little off center mm. to weighted to the left. And it, it leaves this a little open over here to the right. Um, but man, I it's love like that. you almost want to just pull that chair in a little yeah. bit and then just crop it. Yeah. I think if I were to do this over, I'd move the chair over when we were shooting. I'd pull this a little further back so this space gets taken up more. And then it, I think it would feel a little more balanced. But th this table was like solid stone on top. It was super, super heavy. And I think it... I th I think it had like a solid metal hoop oh, as yeah. its base that like good luck picking it up and moving how it. Much, how much? It's a deep shag carpet. So yeah. How much um, moving of furniture was there in a, when, when, when you're on like a set extreme, basically? Extreme, like this one was extremely little. I mean, yeah. the, the shoot schedule was so hectic on this too. Just it was so much to get and so much to look at. Um, it was a lot and uh like even like the glasses on the little table and was that all just kind of most all of that was there and we just a little yeah bit? we'd shift and move stuff so i think you'll notice the the stuff on the table is in different locations see that like this is more oh, towards there, the yeah. center and yeah. now here yeah, it's yeah. more on the left so we had uh i think jan was his name uh really really nice german guy that was there for the day that kind of runs the store i believe and he would kind of look over everything and move it around a bit and, and figure out where we wanted to be. Um, and so this is in the main room looking down the whole thing. Um, the difficulty here is the complexity of all the interacting parts and creating a space where you know you can be. So to it was me, just space after space after yeah, space. And there's very, very busy, you know. So to me, at least we have in the foreground this seating arrangement. And then you see beyond like, oh, at least if I'm looking at this as an invitation to go to a showroom, mm. yeah, it's pretty cool as a showroom. Yeah. You know? So it's well, I think also the flash layers that you did were to accentuate that, like, yeah, being in that one spot, that place, like focus here. And please. there's mirrors like all over the wall that just yeah. add to the depth of the place and the, the busyness. So, right. 
I wonder if you zoomed in on this, if you could find any aspect of us that was hiding. That yeah. Just is like a reflection Ooh. in like a. Yeah, a reflection probably. or a little cord or. <laughs> um, so that same seating arrangement there. I'd imagine I like that on that one, you pulled fairly heavily from the ceiling light. Yeah, that looks I really nice I think it was soft. for the carpet because the carpet, yeah. like if you, it, it, it picked up like footprints real easy. Yeah, we were down it's there. It's almost like, like you have to comb to, it out or something, but yeah. like the flash layer kind of kind of pulled some of that out. I think one of my favorite video shots from this shoot was over here with the mm. thing coming in. And I think they actually wanted to cut that one out for some reason. I think it was focusing on this stuff yeah. in the center that wasn't for sale so yeah well hmm hmm, hmm? Ooh, yeah. skip <laughs> yep. there we go did we jump into the oh, oh are we in the uh no that's a post-production thing yeah, going on there is just... that the final image yeah, there that okay is, yeah. that's odd and then the next ones are is hmm. showing the light oh, and I, stuff it's because we're in whoops we're in i bet you we're in the not in the finals we were in the, all of them oh i wonder if that shadow will be out now oh no that was that was retouched. that was retouched yeah, yeah. okay now we're in yeah, only we retouch Sorry, we, okay including all the folders so that one looks amazing um and then this one uh is going to be the one that we go over for the interior one i i like this one just because of this wood wall here and these chairs and this just the feel of this one to me was really nice Again, the video footage we got out coming onto these books and through this space was really nice. I love the light on the arm here, mm. like that gradient. And yeah, I really like the, the tree. It's really shaped nicely. With the Oh, yeah. It's kind of in front of that highlight area on the wood yeah. wall. So and I think you flashed it more. too, or, or, some, or maybe it's just the natural light layer just natural pulled from light. that, that it shapes it nicely. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's interesting how they how they created this space and they gave it this fireplace feel over here with wood and everything else, but there's no fireplace to be found anywhere. But it like just having that organic element mm. of split wood in there did a lot for it, which was interesting. But um and then this is kind of on the, the other, other side, side of that space looking back. Uh this is also a nice setting, this one. I liked how the I think this is a wash from a strobe. I'm not positive, but I know that. No, they had lights that were kind of just pointing like all over the place. Right. We adjusted them occasionally and all that. And then that's the bedroom setting all the way at the end. Again, the video from this one is is also another one of my my favorites for that. Um, and then we're out like on this window wall to where the depth of the whole space is to our left, where the walls to the right. Um, I liked how we framed this one up as far as having a foreground with this bowl and this uh, Arco lamp coming in from the top. Kind of gives you this foreground and then middle ground and beyond feel to it. Um, I think you balanced really well this kind of combination of more blue light and warmer light right, coming together. Yeah. You yeah. know, it's, it's, you were not denying that it's there, but right. the blending of it's really nice. If, if I had more time and full control of everything, I probably would have done like all lights out, complete, just natural light take, and then just barely pull in like some of this feeling of that mm -hmm. other light. But um, yeah, it's a it's a really nice space. I like that one. That was a double. That was a double stack Oreo. This one. Just getting that wood wall going all the way up, kind of focusing down in this light point, seeing the Arco lamp at the end there. That's fun. It's nice. <laughs> I want to go hang out there. I think I like this one even better, though, yeah, because I, it has a I better foreground framing and just like pulls you all the way down. So that's just end. you're moving back a step, yep. basically. So here we're at that first wall down yeah, there. Right, okay. Now we're that much further. And I believe this this stuff here is outdoor furniture I'm not positive mm, it kind of looks like it yeah it looks a little more like that doesn't it um i really like here though how we have this light coming in on the uh window and everything there i think that adds a lot to it and this was this was like at the end of the day we had made we kind of worked our way around and then back to here towards the end of the day and i think i'm starting to feel exhausted just by looking at that yeah. time of day <laughs> 
And then some details on stuff that, you know, basically just ran around. Like it took so much time to capture the other things. We were really left with uh, just handheld quick details yep. on a lot of stuff. Like to me for this shot, it's I, I would have liked for this to have a, a larger depth of field um, and a more kind of atmosphere lighting going on rather than just the available, you know, hanging lights that are given at this field. But even so, I, I still think it's pretty good. But then just getting kind of bedroom details and stuff from the other setting. And then they, they wanted to have the idea of the whole thing and how big it felt. I do not like this image and I wish they wouldn't have asked us to shoot in that manner, but you do what you do. <laughs> Certainly makes the space feel infinitely big. Yeah, with that mirrored end there to it. And then a couple uh, exteriors for their marketing purposes and such. It's a really neat kind of minimalist store. I appreciate. And then... I like how it's just like sandwiched under that parking garage. Right? Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of cool. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great shot. South Boston. This, this is weird. This is like made to look like a building, but the whole thing's a parking garage. Oh, is it? Yeah. And wasn't one of those letters out? When you I think, yeah, I think it it's in? the A. It looks the just, a? just a little. Oh, the, the lower A. Lower one? Maybe I copied it. Oh, did you just copy I might one have. and pull I it down? I, I thought I... Yeah, maybe I did. Hmm. Oh, no, it was good. the R. The R is like... Less you can kind of notice. I oh, notice the little uh, less glow to it. Yeah, the the you don't have the loss of contrast yeah. Yeah. around it. That took a little bit of thinking to get there. Though. Yeah, because the top of the G there doesn't have any loss of contrast. Right. Probably, but the rest of it does. Yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah. that G and up there, but the A has. Yeah, it's the like loss you can't copy it from anywhere, so you're only left with. Just, right. You don't want to leave it out because it, like the top of the sign. Uh, the letters are out, but that's not as prominent, so it's, right. it's not quite as eye-catching. But Moto Garage, that's all. Moto. And that's what we got for still photos for that day. Um, we probably removed a lot of stuff out there of that There was a lot of stuff, yeah. I think there was a lot of graffiti on the, the side over there in the parking garage. But uh, A couple of works well, by was, Banksy and stuff. Yeah. Uh, if you're a building owner... You have to just hope that Banksy does yeah. something to one of your buildings, and then you just cut that part of the building out yeah. and just put some bulletproof like, glass over it. And oh, good, good leave call. Leave it for All right. Charge people to pull the yeah. curtain back and <laughs> exit through the gift shop. So that's what we did there. It was a really fun shoot, and we are going to go over an interior image, all the different bits of it, and why we did it, and then the video. Yeah, sounds good. All right, let's do that. Tune in for the next one, or click on the next one right that's what we say well, these days yeah well this one will be out first and then right clicking on the next one might not be an option unless it's past a week or something but when the next one we'll comes out, out click on it <laughs>